welcome back to our channel and welcome to Joy's University. This video is part of my lecture series as regards the subject that teacher in the community is called culture and organizational leadership. So one of the most important things that we have to revisit as teachers at Kainaren Bin of Future Teachers is the evolution of education from the beginning up to the present. Because the knowledge that we can get from the past will help us understand better the status quo and at the same time will help us predict the future. That is why today I'll be discussing the historical foundation of education, specifically the sociological implications of these practices to the education that we have now. But before we move on to that, I would like to present you first the very purpose of education or of school. School is an institution created by the society primarily to assure its survival, its stability, and its convenience. And true enough that a lot of things that are taught in schools reflect the nature and the character of the society itself. And in order for this society to be preserved and to maintain its function, schools are created. That is why, according to John Dewey, a school introduces and trains its child into membership of a law society, inculcating the spirit of service and effective self-direction. Meaning, the main function of the school is to train each child and to inculcate in them the reality that they, are, that they are members of a certain society and as members of a certain society, there are functions that they have to accomplish and that they can only do this if they, would, if they have a strong spirit of service to the society they belong and if they have a very clear self-direction. And John Dewey said, if the school successfully does this, then there is a best guarantee of a larger society which is worthy, harmonious, and lovely. Which is right, di ba? Kapag ang society or kapag ang community, ang kanyang mga members ay puro, puro members that are positively contributing to the society's growth, napakaganda talagang tumira doon sa society na yun. That is why the school has to make sure that the students are trained and are molded and that they are, you know, they are given the possible roles that they have to play in their own society so that they will become exactly what the society needs. And this is what you call socialization process according to Brinkerhoff of 1989. And socialization process is a process of learning the roles that each of the members should play, each of the members should play, the status that he or she has to hold, and the values that he or she has to uphold, which are necessary for him to be a participative member of the social institution. At ang tawag naman sa pag tuturo sa atin of the possible roles that we have to play in the future or the role learning process that prepares us for the future roles that it was that is what you call anticipatory socialization and that's how important a school is a school is a very potent agent of socialization everything happens in the school lahat ng mga pangarap ng mga bata nag-iimpisa sa classroom lahat ng mga ideals na gusto nila na develop sa classroom lahat ng buhay na gusto nila later on lahat yon nag nagsisimula sa school that is why the school is tasked to impart specific knowledge and skills necessary for functioning in the society and one of the things that they have to transmit aside from the basic skills and necessary ideas are actually the society's cultural values. Now, let us try to find out how schools did their tasks as agents of socialization in the different periods of history. Okay? And uh, we shall start with the education in the primitive time. You know, napakasimple lang naman ng education during the primitive time. Ang importante lang sa kanila, they survive, they have their food, they have their shelter, they have their clothes. 
That is why, dahil sa gusto na lang mag-survive, gusto na lang mabuhay, they want to have food on the table, and they want to have clothes and shelter at the same time. They crafted strategies for them to get all of these. And these strategies later on became the cultural patterns. And these cultural patterns eventually became life skills. And during the primitive times, there were only three life skills that each of the members of the society should know. The first one is for security and survival. They have to be secure. They have to survive. And the only thing that you, they could do to be secured and to survive is for them to come up with tools, to come up with instruments for them to survive and to be secure. You know, during those times, kahit naman ngayon, fear ay isa sa mga greatest stimulus for action and fear is also the earliest motive for education. They were afraid to die. They were afraid to be killed. They were afraid... Uh, not to have anything on the table and for them not to be afraid of all those things they had to study how to come up with tools how to come up with weapons how to come up with instruments so that they may be able to be secured and to, be, and to survive another aside from that number two life skill is conformity they just had to conform with the moral codes of the group. They have to adhere to the moral code of the groups. They had to know prescriptions. Ito yung mga taboos, yung mga hindi mo pwedeng gawin while you are a part of the society or of the community. Ito yung mga labag sa batas na mga gawain. Dahil kung hindi mo, kung ito ay ginagawa mo, then you will be, you will be driven away from your society. And aside from the prescriptions, they also had to study prescriptions. These are the things that they have to follow. These are the laws, the laws that they have to abide. These are the codes of the group that they have to adhere to. So conformity with the moral codes. And lastly, preservation and transmission of traditions or of cultures. And this could be done by knowing the language first. They have to know how to speak their language. And after knowing how to speak their language, it's very easy for them to transmit whatever it is that they have to, to preserve their culture, to preserve their tradition. So those were the only things that uh, um, they had to learn during the primitive time. And socialization during this particular time is a process by which every member of the society internalized, studied, the norms and the values of the society so that cultural continuity will be attained. And this is where, this is what you call informal education in action. Now I would like to present you as well the key periods in educational history and you'll notice that the school and education are functions of the society and that the schools reflect the nature and the character of the society itself. So, we shall start with, I actually have these columns. The first column will be the historical group followed by the educational goals curriculum, agents, and the influences on Western education. And you, you will realize later on that all of these actually are aligned to each other. Their educational goals are aligned, aligned, to, aligned, aligned to their curriculum and at the same time to the agents and to the influences on the Western education. Let us start with the Greek education. Ang pinaka-goal lang naman ng Greek education is to cultivate civic responsibility and to identify with the city-state. And there were two city-states during that time, the, Athen the Athenian state and the Spartan state. So the Athenians, um, they wanted to develop well-rounded personalities, but the Spartans wanted to develop soldiers and military leaders. And so their, their curriculum also were different. Because in the Athenian curriculum, dahil gusto nila makadevelop ng well-rounded personality, then they taught Athenians, young Athenians, how to read, how to write, how to do math, how to read literary pieces, and the values they could gain from various literary pieces. Okay? Para maging holistic ang kanilang development. But the Spartans just taught their young military songs and military drills and things. For the 
for Athens, ang kanilang mga teachers were private school teachers, sophies, and philosophers, but the Spartans, their teachers were, were military officials and surgeons, drill surgeons. At anong influence ng mga ito sa Western education? Ang mga Athen sa ang mga Athenians, they taught the world, <clears throat> the concept of well-rounded, liberally educated person, but the Spartans taught the, the world the concept of military states. Okay? Next, we also have the Romans. Okay? Sabi nila, um, ang mga Romans daw were great imitators of the Greeks. Lahat ng mga achievements ng mga Greeks, yun din ang achievements ng mga Romans. So, kung ang mga Greeks were the men of thoughts, the Romans were men of action. So, ang pinaka-goal lang naman ng mga Romans during that time was to develop the sense of civic responsibility to the Republic and to develop military and administrative military skills. So, gaya ng sinabi ko, gaya-gaya lang sila sa mga Greeks. That is why, pinagsama nila yung educational goals ng Athenians at Spartans. Yun ang naging educational goals nila. Okay? Ta kaya ang curriculum nila was um, revolved on reading, writing, arithmetic, law, and um, languages. And the agents were private school teachers and the teachers of the schools of rhetoric. And at the same time, ang mga Romans taught the world the, the ability to use education for practical administrative skill relating to civic responsibility. So, yon ang itinuro nila sa mundo. Next, we have the Arabic education. The very goal of uh, Arabic education is to cultivate religious commitment, specifically to Islamic beliefs, and to develop expertise in math, science, and in medicine. That is why ang kanilang curriculum uh, revolved on reading, writing, uh, religion, science, and scientific studies. And for your information, the Arabs were great thinkers as well. They started studying medicine. They were into medicine and they were into Islamic faith. Now, ang kanilang agents of education were um, schools, mosques, court schools, at ang kanilang contribution to the world is um, Arabic numerals, sa kanila galing ang Arabic numerals, yung computation, napakagaling nila sa computation, classical ma classic materials at the same time, science, and most importantly, medicine. They showed all those things to the world. The next one, we have medieval education, at ang kanilang educational goal is merely to develop religious commitment knowledge and ritual and to reestablish social order and to prepare persons for appropriate role that's why they were into writing into philosophy into theology into craft into chivalry and i think this is the time of knighthood of chivalry of king arthur okay and their influence to the world is the establish, establishing the structure the content organization of the university as a major institution okay next we also have the renaissance uh, the main purpose was to cultiv cultivate humanist who was expert in the classics yung renaissance na tinatawag ito na yung period of rebirth so binigyang buhay ulit nila yung mga classic the literature the classic literature of the latin and of the greek that is why ang curriculum nila, or wala na silang pinag-aralan, kundi the classic literature of Lat of Rome and of Greece. They studied the poetry, the art of the Roman and of the Greeks. Ang kanilang agents, classical humanists, educators, and schools, and their influence to the world is the emphasis on literary knowledge, excellence, and style as expressed in the classical literature. And the last one is reformation. This reformation aims to cultivate a sense of commitment, particularly in the religious denomination. At sila yung nagturo na commitment particularly to the religious denomination and to cultivate general literacy. That's why they taught their kids how to read, how to write, how to do catechesis, religious concepts and rituals as well were taught during this particular period. And they actually had vernacular elementary schools for the masses. And at the same time, they had classical schools as well for the elites. And 
Ang kanilang contribution to the world is the commitment to universal education to provide literacy to the masses because they believe that education should be given to everyone not only for the elite it, for, it should be for the mass for the masses and the origin of the school system with the supervision to the to ensure doctrinal conformity so those are the different historical groups with their contributions to the western education this time let's be specific because we will be looking into the history of philippine education system specifically the sociological concept okay so sabi natin kanina education is the function of the society and what is taught really arises from the nature and the character of the society itself now let us look into the evolution of philippine education and how did, did and how did philippine education respond to the socialization process okay now during the pre-hispanic period or the pre-colonial time there was no established formal schooling okay and that there was no formal preparation for teachers too so there were no schools there were no teachers at the same time but their teachers were their parents or the tribal leaders or what they call the babaylan or the catalonan during that time at ang pinag-aaralan lang naman nila during that particular period ay livelihood o kaya household chores o kaya how to become good husband or how to become good wife Okay, so those are the only things that they studied during the pre-colonial period. But during the Spanish time, it was then the time that um, formal education was organized, but it was authoritarian, okay, and that the education was highly religious as well because they because the Spaniards taught us Christianity. So, maraming mga pagkakataon sa schools that they only taught songs, religious songs, they taught doctrines, they had confessions, they taught communions, um, communion among the young, and that their teachers were the Spanish missionaries. And during this particular period, free public education system was established through educational decree of 1863 but the boys and girls during that time had separate schools there were schools exclusively for boys and the same is true with the girls during the american period on the other hand the americans promoted democratic ideals or democratic way of life so the schools that maintained by the spaniards for about three centuries were reopened on august 29 1989 by the secretary of the interior and that during the american period there was free and compulsory elementary education that is through the malolos constitution so i would like to repeat during the american regime through the malolos constitution there was establishment of the free and compulsory education for all free and compulsory and the american soldiers served as the first teachers and then after which the Thomasites arrived in the Philippines in 1909 and the first state school of university status was actually the University of the Philippines so it's the first uh, state school with a university status and during the American regime as well uh, they established the Department of Public Instruction and it was set up um, they established the Department of Public Instruction and they had three level of school during that time seven years was given to element seven years was given to elementary curriculum three years for the primary and four years for the intermediate and two years for the junior uh, college and another four years for the college program but now it's totally different because of the k-12 to we have k-12 to kindergarten and then six years of elementary and then four years of junior high school two years of senior high school okay during the commonwealth period free public education was provided to all or to everyone in the country that is based on the 1935 constitution and that vocational education or household activities was given importance during this time and the education emphasizes nationalism, good manners, and discipline. That is why there were also institutes of private education in order to observe 
private schools and formal adult education was also given importance. And the Executive Order uh, 135 in 1936, President Manuel L. Quezon designated Tagalog as the national language and that in EO 217, he actually mandated Quezon Code of Ethics to be taught in school. And in EO 263 in 1940, uh, they acquired the teaching of the Filipino in the senior year of all high school and in all years in the normal school. Okay, and the Education Act of 1940 also provided reduction of seven elementary years to six years na lang. Tapos, meron na ring fixing the school entrance age at 7. So, pwede ka lang mag-grade 1 kapag 7 years old ka na. Pero ngayon, pwede ka lang mag-grade 1 kapag 6 years old ka na. At ang dapat birthday mo ay July. Hanggang July lang. So, kung birthday mo ay uh, July, August, hindi ka na pwede. At magsi 6 ka ng August, hindi ka na tatanggapin as grade 1. Okay? Ngayon yon. Tapos, there was also a national support for elementary education and they also made it compulsory for the primary children enrolled in grade 1 to attend classes regularly. And they also had adoption of double sessions, double single sessions in the primary grade with one teacher. Ang tawag po natin ngayon dyan ay ang multi-grade classes. Isang teacher lang pero dalawang, dalawang classes meron doon. Kabilang side ay grade 1, kabilang side ay grade 2 at isang teacher lang. Ang tawag nila ngayon, noon ay double single sessions. Ngayon ay multi-grade classes. And there are still a lot of schools that... Um, that offer multi-grade classes, especially schools in the far-flung areas, okay? Next, uh, uh, during the post-colonial time, education aimed at the realization of the democratic ideals and the way of life because it is during that time that the civil service eligibility for teachers was made permanent uh, in pursuant to RA 1079 in 1954 and the daily flag ceremony was made mandatory as well in all schools. So that's RA 1265 of 1995. Ngayon, hindi na lang schools ang merong flag ceremony. Even government offices and government agencies also have their um, flag ceremony not done daily but uh, regularly. Okay? Next. We also have during the Japanese occupation, ito, um, kinon kurtay ng mga Japanese, but they eradicated the idea of resilience upon Western state. So, naniniwala ang mga Japanese during that time that Filipinos could stand alone and that there is a need to foster a new Filipino culture based on the consciousness of the people of the Orientals. And they also elevated the morality of the, the moral, the morale of the Filipinos by giving you know, up overemphasis on materialism. And Japanese <clears throat> are known, diba? Dahil, dahil hindi sila masyadong materialistic. Uh, ano sila? Minimalist sila. Okay? And they also had the fusion of the Japanese language in the Philippines and the termination of the use of English in schools. And the Japanese also taught people the love of labor. Okay? That's very important at the same time. Now, we have the post-colonial Philippines and the aim of this one is the full realization of the democratic ideals of the school. And in this post-colonial Philippines, the writings of Rizal, Lanolimitanure, and that El Filibusterismo were included in the curriculum in all levels and that elementary education was made free and was nationalized and the fees were also abolished. Okay, And the Magna Carta for, for teachers was passed into law by virtue of RA 4670. And there are also other developments in the field of education. We had integrating of values in all areas. You also have, they also emphasize the mastery of learning and they had bilingual education policy which mandates the use of Filipino and English separately as media of instructions and they also had Ministry of Education Cultural Sports they had NCEE uh, eto pala, yung Ministry of Education Culture and Sports naging DEX, Department of Education, Culture and Sports ngayon, naging DepEd. Tapos dati meron pa yung NCEE, National College Entrance Examination. Tapos naging NSAT, ngayon NKINA, National Career Achievement Examination. 
And there was also creation of the Board for Professional Teachers under the Philippine Regulation Commission and the replacement of PBET or the Professional Board Examination for Teachers to Licensure Examination for Teachers. Tapos ngayon, naging BLEP na or Board Licensure Examination for Professional Teachers. And there was also trifocalization of educational system, meaning ang basic education ay konektado sa higher at sa commission sa higher education at ang higher education ay konektado sa vocational education that's trifocalization of the educational system you also had a lot of uh, improvement at ang pinakabago ay ang you know RA 10157 ay RA 10533 or the K to 12 program of the government okay so those are the important events in the history of Philippine education and the history of education in the world. I hope you have learned something from this and I would like you to visit your CLMS for your activities. Goodbye. See you next time.